Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here with a short video looking at uh, the economics of carbon taxes from a synoptic viewpoint. So we take a topic, in this case carbon taxation, and think about the possible micro and macro economic consequences. Here's a little bit of context under a scheme proposed by the International Monetary Fund in the early part of 2022. Uh, businesses with high greenhouse gas emissions in high income advanced countries will be subject to a carbon tax of 75 US dollars for every tonne of carbon they emit. And this would fall to $50 a tonne for polluters in middle income countries and down to $25 a tonne for low income countries. So thinking about the context here, uh, let's uh, consider this question. Can you please give me three possible microeconomic effects of a 75 US dollar per tonne carbon tax introduced in high income countries? I'll play the video for 30 seconds to give you a chance to jot down a couple of points, or you might just want to pause the video and give yourself a little extra time. So in a synoptic paper, you're thinking about the consequences at micro and macro effect, uh, levels. Anything at micro focuses on the impact on individual households, consumers, uh, businesses, and also industries. Those will be microeconomic aspects. You could also talk about the consequences for the labour market, for example, or for market failure. Anything which is related to your micro studies will be credited. Here are three points that I've come up with. First of all, uh, clearly, if you impose a tax that wasn't there before, that's going to increase the supply costs for businesses that are heavy carbon emitters, heavy carbon polluters. So think about coal and, uh, and uh, other, other heavy industries that often, um, things like cement and incinerator plants that create a lot of carbon emissions. That's going to increase their variable costs and their marginal costs. Can you visualise a diagram you could draw to make that point? And that might indeed lower profits. It depends on the extent to which they're able to pass on those costs uh, in the form of higher prices. Those industries themselves, for example, a carbon tax on coal mines, might also reduce the export sales for the industries affected, causing a fall in demand. And again, think about how you could show that in the diagram. Second point would be to think about the impact on consumers. Businesses may pass on environmental taxes onto consumers. And those higher prices will obviously have a micro effect on on families' real incomes, and it may well hit lower income families harder. Because so you could bring in the idea of progressive taxation. Those families will have less to spend uh, in real terms, and therefore they have less to save. And a good example of that is the climate change levy that caused an increase in fuel bills in the last few years. But then what about other businesses? What about other micro effects? Well, a carbon tax of 75 US dollars per tonne is likely to cause a substitution effect. So it could increase demand output and profits for low carbon products, businesses providing things like e-vehicles, e-bikes and off-grid renewables. Now what about uh, macro effects? Again, have a go at this. So this time we're thinking about the macro consequences. So we're thinking about things like aggregate demand and aggregate supply and the key macro objectives, growth, inflation, jobs, the budget balance and so on and so forth. Well, one uh, idea is that obviously this is a supply shock if you impose a new tax. So there could well be a short run increase in cost push inflation as a carbon tax causes an inward shift of short run aggregate supply. So that would be a supply shock to the economy. And again, you could easily use an ADAS diagram to illustrate that. Uh, it might actually on the demand side increase aggregate investment spending 
by businesses that are producing uh, low carbon technologies, although other industries might see a fall in their planned investment. So the impact on I as part of C plus I plus G plus X minus M is perhaps unclear. The government at a macro level would also benefit, presumably, because they'll get revenues, tax receipts from a carbon tax. That increases the budget balance, helps to bring down their fiscal deficit, and that might be used to fund research into renewables or other low-carbon sectors, or perhaps invested into other areas of public spending, such as education, healthcare and housing. So at a macro level, think about the possible consequences using aggregate demand and supply, and you'll be in great shape. Obviously, for each of these, you'd evaluate these points. What we're doing here is we're building KAA, so you'd evaluate the impact on the micro, evaluate the effects on the macro side. But there we go, a quick look at carbon taxes. Take care, see you soon.